So there's a half of the Democratic Party now who would in other times be in the Republican Party. And it's because of what's happened to the Democratic Party. And it's exactly why if you feel like if you're a progressive and you're in the Democratic Party and you've been paying attention to what's been going on, it's why it's exactly what I used to feel like during the Bush administration, because that's how Republicans work. They obfuscate, they gaslight and they gaslight and they smear, they change subjects, they move goalposts. They're not honest actors, which is why I never wanted to be one of them. And then the here is points and sound bites. And here is half the Democratic Party. And here is half the Democratic Party. And they won't even stop doing it. They're doing it all through the primary, all through the election. And they won't stop doing it now, even after the election. They're still doing it. They're still gaslighting and smearing Bernie Sanders, which is the real progressives. So that's the thing. They got to smear real progressives because if they don't, they got to change their party, which is a party that sucks off the teat from Wall Street and Silicon Valley and and fossil fuels in the military industrial complex. And so basically they're fucking Republicans. That's the nice. That's a nice description of them. That's like you're being generous. And them. so the people you mentioned before, those guys like from Josh Marshall, Joan Walsh, and Matt and right. Clay, those guys would be Republicans any in any other era because the policies, I mean, the policies yeah. that Hillary Clinton championed are Republican policy. She so couldn't even get her to be against the TPP and the platform for fuck's sake. Okay. You know they, what? Go ahead. This, yeah. This is why. This is what is so incredibly enraging to me a lot of it is but one is that i i use as a kind of controlled experiment i look at a speech that hillary gave in february where she says and this is very much trying to 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 get out this message that they worked so hard on the clinton campaign this was during the primary which was that sanders is a single issue candidate okay he's a single issue candidate now that meant that that he cared about class issues now just so everyone knows class does affect everyone Right. Like your life, if you're a black person and working class is is harder than the life on average. Right. Of a white person who's working class. So the idea that Sanders being concerned with the working class, that's not a racist thing. It's only racist if you think the only people in the working class are white, in which case you're racist and ignorant. Right. Um, So when. When these people – now, this is – your listeners will be maybe interested in this. There's a term called intersectional, intersectionality, right? That's what femi- – I'm a real feminist, okay? Let's call the other feminist neoliberal hawk feminists. Those are the feminists who hate Bernie Sanders. Mm-hmm. So neoliberal hawk feminists will claim to be intersectional, and intersectionality is basically a way of saying it's not just gender, right? If you're a feminist, you have to look at the way that gender intersects with with class and race, right? Because the experience of a woman in a white woman in the Northeast who's who's like upper class is very different from the experience of a black woman in the in the South who's working class, right? And then if you're LGBTQ, that adds another thing, right? For these people though, for whatever reason, neither identity politics nor intersectionality includes class. They have like a loophole where class is not part of the of the equation. Um Hillary Clinton gave a speech in February during the primary at a in a suburb of, of Nevada, a suburb of Las Vegas, sorry. And she gave this call and response speech, which was, and not everything's about an economic theory. Is breaking up the banks going to end racism? No. Is, is it going to end sexism? No. And she kept going through all, is it going to make, you know, immigrants' rights easier, better? No, whatever. And then she also, this was kind of amazing, when she goes, is breaking up the banks, and, and I'll do it if it turns out they, pro, they, pro, they prove to be a systemic risk. I will. So let's just back up a little bit. Here's what Hillary was doing with that speech. She was, like, explicitly pitting class issues against identity issues, which is dishonest. Because guess what Bernie Sanders never said? All we have to do is break up the banks, and that's going to get rid of racism, sexism, homophobia, and whatnot. Right. He never said that. No one who cares about breaking up the banks thinks that that is how you solve all of these problems. But the other thing that nobody who cares about issues of racial and economic justice actually thinks is that these are totally unrelated issues. So the thing is that Anyone who cares about intersectionality and identity politics, which is basically academic words for say, terms for saying caring about stuff, it's a, a way of saying that you understand that there are multiple factors that affect people, right? Which everyone can agree with and everyone does agree with. Um, hearing Hillary Clinton say this, it was pitting one thing against the other in a way that Sanders does not do. It was There was no nuance. And it was also dishonest in that it was suggesting that Fighting racism had nothing to do with reforming the banks. Now, again, 
the iron is that basically Bernie Sanders was way better and way more identity politics in his speech than Hillary was in hers. Because what Sanders was saying is that identity politics are necessary but insufficient. You need to work on having more diversity and representation, but that's not enough. Now, what Hillary was saying is breaking up the banks, I don't even know if that's necessary. And it's definitely not sufficient, right? Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't even at the baseline of being necessary. She said, and if it proves to be a systemic risk, then I'll do it. So basically, if if Bernie had used her framing and her thinking, he would have been saying, if it turns out there's a problem with representation, yeah, we got to fix it, but I don't know if there is one. So the exact you, opposite. You know what I'm so like, what so what you're it, laying out is, is is what has come to be an accepted truism that somehow Bernie it doesn't understand intersectional politics and he doesn't uh, care about identity politics and Hillary does. The exact opposite is true. In fact, what she yeah. was doing was yeah. the thing that they're accusing Bernie of doing, and that's exactly. the exact. And it's the ex- and again. So p- let me just ask you on our our, our exit yeah. question here, Katie. What do yeah. you think? Do you think this is going to keep happening with the left media? Keep doing stuff like this, or do you think? When do you think that they go? Okay, we're progressive and we're going to stop this stuff. Do you think that will ever happen? Yeah. I think we should say the liberal Clinton. Let's call it the Clintonite media because it's not all left media. It's it's a it's the liberal media, and I think that sometimes the danger with that is that people think we're from on the right wing, which we're not. But I don't know. I th- I honestly think that we need to. Sh- this is not going to be very unpopular among some people's uh, to some people, but we need to shame these people. Need to be they need to be given a chance. They can admit that they were wrong or admit that they're dishonest. And if they were wrong and confused, they can still try to write a little bit and they get a couple of rounds to prove themselves and then they're they have no credibility I, they're not look we can't have them fired but i i'm happy my, i think we should have a list jimmy what if we do a list of like like you uh, think Claire, dude, where's my cred do you think clara jeffrey or joan walsh or uh, ezra klein or matt and glace do you, the thing. Do you no think those people to are gonna this, right what no they're not going to they they no one's gonna say the, the following I was totally wrong. I, um, I unethically and disingenuously backed the less uh, popular candidate, and it's because of me, in large part, that Donald Trump is president. That's not going to happen. Um, if they were smart, they would have done it in a kind of more nuanced way and left themselves some wiggle room, and they would pretend that they made mistakes, and they would pretend that there was some stuff that Sanders people were saying that made sense, but they're not going to do that. And you know what? Like, look. All these liberals, like Clara Jeffrey, I'm sure thinks that that Judy Judith Miller deserved to be discredited, right? And yes. she needed to have her name kind of like, you know, her name had been had been um, sullied by being a drum major for the Iraq War. Yeah, Judith Miller, who pe- do people don't know Judith Miller, she was the one who yeah. pushed the false narrative about the war weapons of mass destruction on the front page of the New York Times. Right, and you know, people think there should be a price to that now. The thing is that we have to actually, I think, show people. I I, I want to do this, and, and this is another trick. Ready, Jimmy? This is related to your question. Do not fall for the narrative of it's over. Stop relitigating the primary. That's a lie. And the reason it's a lie is because a, if, if that were true, why are people responding to Bernie Sanders? I thought he was an irrelevant footnote. I thought he was old news. He's clearly not because. He's the guy running around and doing good stuff, much to the chagrin of people who would rather – see, these people are so disingenuous that they would rather have – not have someone do good things on Dakota Access Pipeline than have to be proved wrong. They, in other words, they would rather Sanders not do anything for the Native Americans protest, you know, water protectors than have him do something because it blows up their spot. Yes. It shows them to be yeah. right. That's how progressive these people are. They really would. They really don't want to see things change for the better if it makes their hot takes uh, pieces and hot takes look less reliable. But the thing is, yeah, we have to relitigate the primary and in one for one, one of the reasons is because we never litigated it. We right. Litigated it correctly. Don't if you don't want to talk about the pri- the primary anymore, then stop pushing these false narratives like happened today on Twitter, where someone was like, "Oh, you know, if only the the um, fight for fifteen people had had like had done more for to fight Trump," and then um, Mark Murphy, this NBC analyst specialist. Um, said something like, I know it seems so, it seems so quaint or yeah, it seems so quaint that 12 versus $15 an hour fight. 
Are you kidding? Like, I, I, I tweeted it today when I saw that. So basically, he's referring to how Clinton and and Bernie were fighting. You know, Bernie wanted a fifteen dollar an hour thing, and Clinton wanted a twelve hour thing. And you know what? Now that we have Trump in in office. It really goes to show you how little that battle mattered. Who cares? Three dollars more an hour. Who cares? We were stupid to quibble over that. That's like literally. That's like if I were a teacher showing us, like, doing a demonstration on how to not analyze a word problem. That's the process I would show. It's the exact opposite. The reason Donald Trump is president, in large part, is precisely because the people who don't understand that the fight for a minimum wage increase had to be at the center of the campaign are the people who are still writing the postmortems about the campaign. Like, these people during the... when we, well, I got into a fight about this today on Twitter, and the big thing is that I remember watching, like the nerd that I am, watching the Democratic Platform Committee meetings, and there was a huge battle during the drafting uh, part of it, the dr draft committee, which is when they, they basically, Sanders, Clinton, and Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Katie, do you think going for so how long do you think, do you think this is ever going to get reconciled inside the Democratic Party? Well, I think the irony is that they either need to, the irony is that the people who are least attached to the Democratic Party, like you and me, um, not just you and me, people who have our kind of politics, which is a lot of the people who supported Bernie, we're the we're the ones who would know the right things to do for the Democratic Party. I'm fine being a member of another party. That's the irony. Um, Me too. Need to do, and I'm not sure that they do. And we know that because they lost the campaign that they were supposed to win to prevent Donald Trump from being president. If they have some kind of renewed awareness, maybe they'll realize it. But I think that that what this election really revealed was like an entitlement and a group think and an out of touch insular perspective that really didn't even let them win a campaign against Donald Trump. Like that's how distorting and blinding it was. Yeah, that's that is how distorted they were. They couldn't even beat Donald Trump. That if if you if, you, if you're going to trust their analysis, why why would you trust the analysis of the people who already lost to Donald Trump? They're exactly. so dumb. So I don't so well, I'm going to let other people analyze why you guys lost cuz obviously you people are sheer shitty at self-reflection. I know, and if they were smart, they'd be humble, they'd bow out a little bit, but they're not, so we have to do that for them. And in fact, I'm going to write another piece about like the blame game, and like since they're not taking any responsibility, we're going to have to put the blame on them. But I love the newest hot take um, postmortem, which is that, you know what, it turns out Donald Trump was just not defeatable. Like, the, the country is just too racist and misogynist. He could never have been beaten, yes. which is a convenient narrative, right? It also makes you incredibly, if you're saying that you spent over a year working on a campaign and we're too dumb to realize it was a waste of time, but now you're smart enough to realize why it failed? That, that doesn't make sense to me. Right. You're either dumb then, dumb now, dumb both times, lying then, lying now. What is it? Uh, I think it's mental gymnastics by neoliberals trying to figure out why people uh, don't want to vote for them. And that's it's neoliberalitis. Yeah. Neoliberalitis. It is. And the reason identity politics are so dangerous, and I mean this when I say that, I mean the the hijacking of them, not ha trying to have more diversity, which is extremely important. The reason it's so dangerous is because what happens when people distract from attack people's policies by using things like um, like optics or you know uh, Bernie's whiteness against him? What happens is that someone like Donald Trump becomes the president, right? Yes. Because. And then who suffers the most? I mean, this is the big sad irony is that it's the very people who who the who people claim to either represent or care about who are going to suffer the most under Donald Trump. And that's in large part because some people in the Clinton campaign decided it was a more effective strategy to call every single person who was on the fence um, racist, misogynist, instead of doing aiming them into it. Because that works really well. Yes, yeah, I think Martin Luther King talked about building coalitions that way, right? Yeah, you, you, they, instead of trying to build coalitions, they tried to shame people into voting for Hillary Clinton. Katie, I, I'm going to put a link to your article. Everybody should check that out uh, right underneath that yeah. Paste magazine. Thanks for being on the show, Katie. We'll have you on soon again. Please get a new microphone. Hey, we're doing another live Jimmy Dore show the day after Christmas, December 26th. We're doing a live Jimmy Dore show in Burbank, California. Come see it. There's a link for tickets right there.